November 3rd, 1955, marked the first flight of the RB-57D, a high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft being produced for the United States Air Force by Martin. The chief of Martin flight test was at the controls when the D became airborne at 7.10 a.m. He reported satisfactory flight characteristics and noted several points. Adverse yaw predicted by wind tunnel test and aerodynamic analysis appeared to be much less than expected. The minimum control speed appeared to be less than predicted. The pitch up expected from aileron application was not apparent to the pilot. Following initial flight, the RB-57D was placed in flight test status. Subsequent flights were made for the Martin Phase I program to determine preliminary aircraft stability and control characteristics. The program moved efficiently over a 22-day period. 10 hours and 36 minutes were logged in five flights. The D was then ready for Air Force evaluation. Phase II flight program for stability and control characteristics was included. Personnel from the Air Force Flight Test Center completed this evaluation on 7 December after nine flights totaling 30 hours. The sustained flight test program was aided by an extensive ground test program. This ground program, such as vibration and slosh test, was executed as rapidly as accuracy would allow prior to first flight. The vibration test was conducted in two phases, the normal vibration test and a 90% limit load proof test. For the normal test, the aircraft is vibrated by vector force electromagnetic shakers. Two shakers at each wing tip are used. Dummy engines are substituted to prevent damage to the actual engine. About 60 vibration pickups are mounted to the aircraft. Vibration characteristics received at the control and instrument panels are recorded. For the 90% limit load proof test, a method was devised of shaking the wings through a sufficiently large excursion. This introduced the required loads to the wing with full fuel tanks. A slosh test on a honeycomb integral wing tank was performed. The tank was oscillated through an arc of 30 degrees at 16 to 20 cycles per minute. Test fluid was maintained at 110 degrees Fahrenheit and 6.25 PSI. Integral fuel cells were sealed with a plastic non-curing compound. After 50 hours of testing, no leaks, stains or seepage occurred and there were no structural failures. For increased range, aerial refueling is included in certain RB-57D airplanes. The flying boom method of aerial refueling was tested using a KC-97E tanker and a B-57B, which is basically similar to the D. The yellow paint on the B-57 simulates the eventual shape and location of the receptacle to be installed on the D. Tests revealed aerodynamic compatibilities of the two aircraft during approach, contact, and breakaway at actual refueling altitude. Data was also obtained on control sensitivity of the two aircraft. The D is now ready to move into flight test phase three. The standard Phase 3 development flight test program will correct the problems which were previously uncovered and further evaluate the aircraft performance and characteristics. Upon completion of Phase 3, the RB-57D will be ready for delivery to the U.S. Air Force. <laughs>